what are the laws of physics of your business? And it's not always something as simple as Moore's Law. It, that's too, that's too contrived. Moore's Law is obviously, as you know, not a law, it's just a law of competition. If I knew you were building something with a million transistors, and I wanted to beat you, I would be obtuse to build something that's 500, 500,000, right? And so if I knew you were building a million transistors, and I found out somehow, I'm gonna build a chip that's 1.2 million transistors, just to be on the safe side. Now, that's not a law of physics, that's a law of competition. And, and, um, uh, and that law of competition has driven, and, and of course, we tell our fabs, I need 1.2 million transistors or we're dead. And so what, is it, what do engineers do? Make 1.2 million transistors available. And next year you say, 2 million transistors, we're dead. And they make 2 million transistors available. And so that's the law of engineering. Okay, that's, you give engineers a problem, they'll, they'll find you a solution. And so those two things compound in terms of the law. Well, that's not really the first principles of our business. Now, now of course, what the, the first principles and, and how it applies to our business is Moore's Law matter. It means uh, we have in our industry enough visual computing headroom, enough um, perception headroom that more transistors could cause you to have a better product. That's a strength and a weakness. That's a strength and a weakness. What it says is this. Every single year, if I do my job well, I can bring a new processor to market that is twice as good as the last one. However, if I don't show up, my competition could offer a chip that's twice as good as mine. And that's why our industry was littered with this idea that um, uh, it's a leapfrog industry. Mm -hmm. It's another way of saying Moore's Law is your friend. If you could leapfrog. If you could, if, if you could leapfrog. I mean, when somebody could leapfrog you, uh, that's actually good news. That says you still have work to do to innovate and you can bring something to the marketplace that the market will continue to pay you for. Let me give you an op opposite example. How do you leapfrog somebody building a digital audio chip? It's really hard to leapfrog somebody. Because when you're done... Nine point one seven. Yeah, exactly. It's still at the limits of human perception. Unless you're a dog, you can't hear the difference. And so that video is the same way. Um, video is uh, it's very, very fast to reach the limits of human perception. Um, whether it's MPEG or HD or H.264, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, and so, you know, you need to understand uh, at the core of your business how quickly it is that you can saturate the benefits. And if, you, if you're in a business where uh, it's very, very rapid to saturate the benefits, perceivable benefits, you better make sure that the foundation of your business is not about that. So let me give you an example. Um, uh, technologically, a purse is a purse. But there's $2,000 purses and there's $20 purses. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, how is it possible that, that a bag with a hook on it, technologically rather simplistic, has the ability to continue to innovate year in and year out? And so they figured out that it's really not about, um, in their business, it's not about utility. Right. It's about it's design. Design and stuff. And so they've moved their psychology as companies to not focus on the utility of it. And so, our company has to do the same. All of your companies have to do the same. You start out thinking maybe it's because utility is the reason why people buy your products, but long term you need to be thoughtful about is that true? And so for a lot of audio equipment companies, um, the reason why you buy certain high-end audio equipment, the subtle differences are so small, it must not be because of utility. It must be because of something else. Right. And so you just have to understand where the most logical friend is. Well, Moore's Law is, is uh, fortunately um, and unfortunately the friend of the GPU. Uh, Moore's Law, as you know, is no longer the friend of the CPU. And the reason for that is because... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, and, and it's not, I'm not saying something controversial, I'm just saying something factual. Um, the reason why people are satisfied with their CPUs and, and people are buying... The reason why the most popular CPU on the planet today is the Atom. It's a 10-year-old CPU and it's just tiny, tiny CPUs because Moore's Law is no, no longer its friend. That a 10-year-old architecture manufacturing today's uh, process is good enough for the vast majority of people. Now that's a good news and bad news. In our particular case, uh, the GPU, if I had twice as many transistors, I'll make you a GPU that's twice, twice, twice better. Mm -hmm. And so 
uh, the and it's the reason the reason for that is because our visual um, visual processing system of our brain is so acute that we can see so many subtle things. Right? It's not just colors and other depth and textures and motion and it's just a lot, the the detail that we could that we could absorb with our eyes is just significant. And so so that's a that's a good news and a bad news and, and we just have to make sure that that we understand our, the dynamics of our business uh, and we don't rely on just perfect execution, but perfect execution is really important in our business. So